in the series that uh, I began on breaking new grounds, we have gone through four of the parts, beginning with the power of self-image, the cost factor, the root tree principle or the root power, and last night we tried to go through the fourth one, the power of information. And this morning we'll be taking a journey into the part five, the power of possibility mentality. The power of possibility mentality. The power of possibility mentality. For you and I to walk in the fullness of the blessings of Abraham, which is the blessing of greatness, we must follow the Abrahamic steps to get in there. In fact, Jesus said, if you are Abraham's seed, then you must do the works of Abraham. John chapter 8 and verse 39. And so I take for my text, Romans chapter 4 and verse 17 to 21. The power of possibility mentality. And I'm, I want you to have this statement before I read my text. Possibility mentality is the master key to doing the impossible. Possibility mentality is the master key to doing the impossible. Now, chapter 4 of Romans... And I'd like you not just to reach out for information, but reach out also for impartation. Reach out for impartation, not just for information. The two are coming together. As Peter was speaking, the Bible said, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had them. So every time in God's presence offers a twofold opportunity. Opportunity for information an opportunity for impartation. And your readiness for the two is what makes the difference. A man was impotent and was seated in our church, in the old church facility. And in the course of the word of life, something fell on him. He was in the gallery. Satan has no power over you. That's what he heard. And something descended on him and his body felt it. And that same moment, the impotency gave way. And he stood before the altar a week later to tell his story. Because the gospel is the custodian of the power of God to everyone that believes. A man came here from Cameroon some years back and he was reading with terminal condition of HIV AIDS. And his flesh was already growing fungus, green. And doctors had given out on him and he was sitting down somewhere there and the word of the Lord came that someone has come from a far place and you have been told you will die. And now God is saying, because I live, you live also. And then the skin began to vibrate visibly. Say with me, power. That's what makes the, the church different from every uh, other gathering. You can't go to Harvard school and expect something to vibrate in your body. Just leave you the way it came, met you. You know, if you are sick, you're sick. And, uh, <laughs> that's the difference. 
So get ready for impartation. One great man of God was teaching in 1977, and he was ruminating on um, Daniel and the spirit of excellence. And something sparkled in my brain. My brain experienced a visible movement. It was a dangerous movement. That movement hasn't stopped moving. Ability to absorb any kind of information that I choose to be interested in. So when I talk politics to politicians, they take notes. I was teaching in uh, this hotel in Ibadan. What was it called? On the Hill. Premier Hotel. And then it was a business seminar. And a Muslim man came by. He never knew it was a Christian business forum. He just sat down there, was taking note, enjoy himself. It was at the last minute that he knew, ah, this is church. <laughs> you know, we are the light of the world. Chapter 4 of Romans, verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. You have had many dangerous things since you came here. That you, that inside you are potentials greater than what Joseph possessed, greater than what Noah carried, greater than what Abraham carried, that of all born of women, there is no one as great as John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Matthew 11, 11. You see, so inside you are virtues that makes you greater potentials that establishes the fact of your greatness than any greatness you ever read of in the Old Testament. That the least in this kingdom carried greater potential. So certain dangerous things have been spoken to you. That you are greater than Job, who was the greatest in all the East. That you are greater than Abraham, who was old and sick in age, and the Lord has blessed him in everything. That you are greater than Jacob, that Laban said, I have learned by experience that God has prospered me for your sake. I mean, this was spoken to him, but he needed a positioning to actualize it. As it is written, I've made thee the father of many nations before God, whom he, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope? Come and say possibility thinking. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall I say it be. So he was addicted to what was spoken. The circumstances notwithstanding. The situations notwithstanding. Now listen to this. And being not weak in faith, so that mentality is called faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what God has promised, he was able also to perform. Being fully persuaded, possibility mentality. Being fully persuaded that these are impossible circumstances. But because of his mentality, they were converted to supernatural possibilities. 100 years old, that was Abraham's mentality. Possibility, mentality, in spite of prevailing negative circumstances. This is very important. Possibility. 
possibility mentality. Also, we read from Hebrews, and you see it again in chapter 11, verse 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac thou shall all thy seed be called. Accounting, look at verse 19, that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. He said, come and kill him. He said, after killing him, I know God is able to raise him up. Possibility mentality is the master key to doing the impossible. And I want you to understand that. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Everything in your hand today began in your mind yesterday. Everything in your hand today, it began in your mind yesterday. And whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your hand. Whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your hand. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whatever you cannot imagine, you can never deliver. And come now, let's be the tower whose top will reach to heaven. So we'll not be scattered on the face of the earth. And God came down to see the, the building with the sons of men built. And God said, <laughs> Now this they began to do. Genesis 11 and verse 6. And now nothing can be refrained from them which they had imagined to do. So it is your imagination that sets the pace for your destination. It is your imagination that sets the pace for your destination. It is your imagination that sets the pace for your destination. It is your mental picture that defines your actual future. It is your mental picture that defines your actual future. Therefore, possibility mentality is the key to a world of unlimited possibilities. Possibility mentality is the key to a world of unlimited possibilities. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed, and because thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart mentality but shall believe that the things you say will come to pass you sh will have whatsoever you say uh -huh. the key to a world of unlimited possibilities
the children of Israel came by at Kadesh Barnea and 12 spies were sent to check out on the land. And 10 of them came back with an evil report that the land is as it was described. It was a land flowing with milk and honey and there are even the fruits that we got. How be it, there are giants in the land. And it's an impossible place for us to possess. Hmm. And Caleb, Joshua and Caleb stilled the people. Caleb stilled the people and said, let us go up at once. And possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. For we are well able. So it was a conflict of mentalities. It was not the problem. The problem was not their problem. It was their mentality. It was their mentality. The problem was not a problem in itself. It was their mentality. We are well able to possess it and overcome it. We are well able. Let us go but once. Shut up. And they tried to stone them. And the glory of God covered them. You see, God will always stand by his word. When your mentality is in place and it's in line with scriptures, you will enjoy divine covering. You will enjoy divine covering. Say with me, mentality. Years ago, we were driving in the night Maybe around 1, 1 30 in the morning. And then, here we were, face to face, an oncoming vehicle on a narrow, long bridge. You know the kind of bridges that used to be, where one vehicle must pass for the other one to pass, park for the other one to pass. And here we were entering into that narrow bridge with another bigger vehicle on the other side. And so we had a choice. I was on the steering, bless God. I was on the steering that day. And um, there were two choices at our disposal. Either to dive into the river, because there were no guards on the side, or to go head on collision with the oncoming vehicle. And in the splits of seconds, mentality began to answer. This car was not built for floating on the water. <laughs> and it will give his angels charge over you when you are crossing a narrow bridge. They will take you up. <laughs> Amen. Bear you up on their wings lest you dash thy foot against a stone. Possibility mentality. I can't tell till forever how we pass that bridge. There was no brushing. There was no crashing. There was no nothing. By the time we crossed to the other side, all the other people in the vehicle breathed downward. The car felt it. That's very important for us to know that it is mentality that defines destiny. What you know determines how you think. And how you think determines how you live. 
And how you live determines what you become. So the price of possibility mentality, again, goes back to exposure. Knowledge. Insight. What quality information does is to renew your mind so as to transform your life. And until your mind is renewed or your mentality is re-engineered, you cannot experience a change of position. Because how you are thinking determines where you are now. So when you start thinking better, you get to a better place. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you want to improve a man's life, you first of all affect his thinking pattern. Until you influence his thinking pattern, you cannot affect his lifestyle. So what qualitative information does is to influence your thinking pattern so as to affect your life. So the price of possibility mentality is exposure. What do I call it? When you see what has been done by others, it influences your thinking pattern in getting done whatever you may have been asked to do. It is what you know that has power to influence how you think and which eventually transforms your lifestyle. For instance, I checked through scriptures and I could not find anywhere where Jesus was asking his disciples for helps. Peter, do you have some dough there? Just for a moment. We'll get it back for you later. Uh, John, you have some savings? We, we might need some things now more than what we actually budgeted for. They all looked to him. He looked to none of them. You can imagine what that picture did for me in getting started in ministry and up to tomorrow I've not had the privilege of asking anyone around me immediate or father any day of my life till this moment hey can I have something there what information does is to influence your thought life so as to transform your real life now, I can't imagine Jesus because scriptures is full of images, pictures. Amen. When you see the pictures, it helps in defining your future. Now, I couldn't imagine Jesus on a sick bed. And then Peter, James, and John were praying over him. Master, thou shalt not die. No way you shall live to declare the works of God. And then they open his eyes. Ah, it's red. Oh, master, you must not die. This is yellow fever. <laughs> you know, I couldn't imagine Jesus. Because what revelation does is to stretch your imagination. What revelation does is to what? Stretch your imaginations. So as to beautify your destination. Revelation stretches your imagination to beautify your destination. 
I couldn't imagine him on a sick bed. And I have not been there. <laughs> because it is your imagination that sets the pace for your destination. I, and I promise never to be there. Because it is contrary to my imagination. And this they began to do. And now nothing can be refrained from them. Which they had imagined to do. I keep a very dangerous shadow. And I thank God for it. It's my cross. And I walk the hours. But I'm ever refreshed. So the price for possibility mentality is an untiring commitment to enlarging your information bank. The larger your information bank, the more elastic your possibility mentality becomes. This is very vital. Everybody saw a giant in Goliath, but David never saw it. His exposure reinforced his possibility mentality in taking on Goliath. He said, let no man's heart fail him because of me. That servant will go and fight this Goliath and I'll bring down his head today. You watch. <laughs> I'll bring down his head today. You watch. He said, I was keeping my father's sheep one day and then came a lion and took one of the lambs. I ran after it and smote it. Mm. He said, one day a bear came. A bear came and I came after it and destroyed it. God who delivered to me the lion and the bear. He would give me this uncircumcised Philistine today. <laughs> and he hastened towards him and and the sling sank, the stone sank into his forehead and Goliath fell down. He caught his head and lifted it up. David has killed 10,000. And Goliath, I mean, and Saul, 1,000. Saul, you have failed. <laughs> Possibility mentality is a requirement for the actualization of your royalty in the race of life. David could never ascend the throne without crushing Goliath. The Israelites could not possess the land without overcoming the giant. So there are obstacles on your way to feeling destiny that must be crushed before destiny is fulfilled. That must be crushed before destiny is fulfilled. Now imagine Nehemiah for God's sake. How is a captive thinking of rebuilding the broken walls and restoring the dignity of a people in distress? Possibility, mentality. That's it. I believe that destiny is at the mercy of possibility mentality. I believe that destiny is essentially at the mercy of possibility mentality. So it's, it is exposure that enlarges the scope 
of our possibility mentality. It is exposure. The more you see through readings, through personal contacts with accomplished individuals, the larger your cost of possibility thinking becomes. I walked on the grounds of Ora Roberts University 21 years ago. I looked up and down. And I said, this is God. Everybody said, this is God. But it can happen anywhere else. This is God. I don't care what anybody else sees there, but I see God. That no man can do these things except God be with him. This is God. But I didn't stop there, but it can happen anywhere else. So what exposure does is to enlarge your possibility cost. This is God, but it can happen anywhere else. This is God, but it can happen anywhere else. Like I said earlier on at the opening of the morning session in exhorting you, exploit is essentially a product of exposure. And I think no one's future is guaranteed without exposure. I believe to be exposed or is to, is to excel and to be inexposed is to be deposed. I believe that. Why? Because exposure stretches your possibility thinking which is a requirement for your accomplishment in life. Without a possibility mentality, we will never dare come into this forest. And we must come to this forest to fulfill destiny or divine agenda. We could have been comfortable before Jordan and settled down like the two and a half tribes of Israel that never entered into Canaan. Because the movement is contrary to all respectable principles of church growth and ministry expansion. But that is what must be crushed before you can cross over to the next phase. My restroom in this office has hosted every kind of persons in this place. And when they come talk to me, they say, can we use your toilet? Why not go ahead? There are many things God has spoken to many of you. And you keep cringing because you don't have the required mentality to press into it. Abraham operated on that frequency of possibility mentality to become the father of nations today. Say, God said, come and kill. I go ahead. He's able to bring him back to life. After he has fully died, then I'll have a bigger testimony. He went ahead. There are many people today loaded with potentials for building conglomerates. But there they are cringing in one spot. If I dare that and something happens, then where do I go? That was what destroyed the tribe of Reuben. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. The beginning of my strength. The excellency of power. But thou shalt not excel because you are as so unstable as water. Genesis 49 and verse 1 and 2. And then in Judges chapter 5, verse 16, 17, and 18. Ah, why abode you still among the sheep? To hear the bleating of the sheep? But for the Reuben, the tribe, 
among the tribe of Reuben, there was great searching of heart. To go, not to go. To move, not to move. And so they become stagnant. Possibility mentality is the cure for doubt. If you don't possess it, you'll be a victim of doubt. you become another doubting Thomas. The tribes, the tribe of Reuben has no place today because of lack of possibility mentality. They settled down for the second place. Therefore, wake up from your slumber and invest in building your possibility mentality through explorative researches, particularly looking at the lives of men and what they had accomplished in your areas of interest. I had no problem being able to pursue the building of a big church because I'm one of the privileged students of Yonggi Cho. And I read volumes of his materials. And that did not only inform me, but it also imparted me with a sense of responsibility in getting the job done. Because my understanding is that whatever area you belong, God has ordained that you be the head and not the tail. That you be above only and not beneath. You are destined for the top, not just for the middle. Therefore, wake up and take time out to enlarge your possibility mentality. Through an untiring commitment to exposures. When we introduce appetite to learning, we become utterly limited in knowledge. When we introduce racism to learning, we begin to lose grounds to mediocrity. Wherever knowledge can be found, go for it. Whosoever the authors may be, go after it. A woman was used by God to open me up. To the realms of supernatural prosperity, Gloria Copeland. And they will be here this May 2007 to be with us for three nights. You can't miss it investing into your mind. Without a positive, driven mind, your world will never mind you. Because your, possi your, your, your possibility thinking is what makes you do the impossible. Your possibility thinking is what makes you do the impossible. He said in the book of Job, Job 36 and verse 3, I will fetch wisdom from afar. I will fetch wisdom from afar. And God was said, buy the truth and sell it not. Proverbs 23 and verse 23. So possibility mentality is not a gift. It's not a talent. It's what you consciously cultivate. 
through the channel of exposure. Through the channel of exposure. It's not it's just gifted. It's a positive thinker. No. You must find out what has made them start thinking differently from others. It is the information that is at work in him. The knowledge he has applied himself to. The discoveries he has embraced. And now is operating on that frequency towards his recovery. So the ultimate of intellectual capacity is enhancement of mentality. <laughs> that is the information you have acquired now has affected the way you think. So you can maximize your potentials in your pursuit. Twenty years ago, a man asked me a question in the U.S., 1987. Oh, Brother David, that was fantastic. What needs have you in your ministry? And I reacted. Our ministry has no needs. We only meet needs. Because ministry is about meeting needs. It's not about being needy. You are meeting needs. If you are not meeting needs, you are not in ministry. So you are not a needy. So I don't carry a needy mentality. That's why we have a boisterous ministry that's breaking forth on every side. Because your mentality is what defines the limits of your destiny. You can't possess a needy mentality and still walk in plenty. You can have a poverty mentality and still command prosperity. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I cannot imagine Jesus going around government houses. I say, excuse me, is there anything you can do for us? I have never gone to one. I like. We got the sea of all of this place without knowing the way to government house. What am I doing there? Kings were going to priests. Not priests going to kings. I carry that mentality longest time. We have been in nations where the presidents of the nation requested, oh, we, I will be glad to host you at home. I say, I'm sorry, it's not part of our program. This afternoon is busy. That is the that is priesthood in scriptural picture. It's not lighting around and be prophesying nonsense from house to house. <laughs> Do you know something? I mean, I've been in Lagos now since 1989. I don't know the government house in Lagos. Okay, to do what? To say I beg to apply? For what? I can control everything you do from my room. That's priesthood. Now you see, these mental pictures, they help to dignify your destiny. If you can possess them. I knew my Bible that the art is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The owner cannot be begging for from the caretaker so all those people in government are caretakers my father owns it he said the art is the lord let them come and come and contest it how can you be the owner when it was there before you came you can't be the owner of the earth it was there before you arrived here and by the time we know who owns it and we connect with who owns it the caretaker will bow when the landlord comes the caretaker keeps quiet now if the caretaker say, the landlord say, I don't want this man in my house. The caretaker can say, I want him. He will sack the caretaker and get his property back. How many agree that the earth is the Lord? 
He said, the earth is the lost and the fullness thereof, the world. And all human beings are dwelling in it. So you can press your button and the job be vibrating. If you win election and we don't want to, we, we remove you. We won't go to court. We remove you on the altar. When we press two, three scriptures, you scatter. Amen. Amen. So election does not end after election. It ends when God has finished turning and overturning and overturning. And then it comes to the hand of the person to whom it belongs. Amen. I don't eat their guguru with them, so I don't have any apology to anybody for anything that God is asking me to do. Please get seated. Sit up. And jealously guard the loins of your mind. And protect your thinking pattern. So as not to become a victim of mediocrity. This is the gospel of exploits. Abraham, against hope, believed in hope that he would become the father of many nations. He considered not his own body, which is now as good as dead when he was 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he pressed on and he got there. Listen to this. The thickness of darkness is what promotes the glory of light. Headlamp on your car is of no value the only day. But in the night, it becomes an asset. So the darkness in the land today is your opportunity. If you will walk in the light of the gospel. And what I'm saying is this. If God ever told you anything, it is a possibility. It's as good as done. For faith we see that call it the who also will do it. Is that thing too hard for God? Then it is wisdom to embark on it by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It is wisdom to embark on it by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It is wisdom to embark on it by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Paul, a man of exploits, this is what he said, I can do all things. How many things? <laughs> so people that are given to possibility mentalities, they become natural instruments of exploits. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is the secret of every star possibility mentality that is the secret of every star i can do all things and you know the word says much learning doth make thee mad huh about paul that was what king agrippa said he said hey stop there paul much learning has made thee mad so his possibility mentality is a byproduct of his commitment to the art of learning. So, boo, boo, is expanding, is enlarging because more information is coming in to show him more and more of what can ever get done. This book is your greatest asset. In enlarging your possibility mentality. This book. Why? Because it does not only inform people, it imparts people. He said, the words I've spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. He said, hey, the flesh profits nothing. It is a spirit that quickeneth. The words I've spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. So it's a quickening power in it. So when you 
come across any revelation, it, it, it imparts your life with the grace required to actualize it. So don't toy with this book. And don't toy with books that help your understanding of this book. How can I understand it except someone should guide me? So there are dynamic authors, amazing authors in the body of Christ that are sent to enlarge your understanding and by so doing, enlarging your possibility mentality. They are there. Whose interpretations? Now you see, he said, I wish there were an interpreter, one among a thousand. So not everybody is an interpreter. There are interpreters and they are one among a thousand. They are there to show man his righteousness and his upstanding so they can enter into the fullness of their possessions. So most of the authors you find are interpreters of the truth. And they are interpreting the truth to your own understanding so it can influence the way you think and then you can go forward into your, into your destiny. That is what it takes. He said, if there were an interpreter among them, one among a thousand, then I would say unto man, rescue him from destruction. Rescue him from going down to the pit because I found a ransom. So there are interpreters, and we call them authors. We call them what? We call them authors. The things that we settle down for one year and not, can't get nothing out of it, a book comes in and just opens it to you. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, I didn't know. They are interpreters. The same way your various professions, there are interpreters of the facts related to your career. They help you interpret. Ah, I never thought so before. Then you move forward. Once again, as I conclude, get back to books. Get back to tapes. Get back to resource materials, journals, and magazines. And... Particularly life stories. Nothing is more transforming than biographies. Biographies of proven, accomplished men and women. They help to stretch your imagination. And by so doing, they beautify your destination. So wake up and do something. I conclude by letting you know After God called me to ministry far away from architecture, and there's a long distance between architecture and ministry. Now, I gave myself, among other things, to studying biographies. And I still can remember, I had my fingertips on about 39 biographies. Some I read fully, some I read the tips that I think I needed. And after those readings, I was already working in the reality of the future of the ministry that he has called me into. It was too, the confidence was out of this world. Because you are not being called to come and do an impossible task. Others have done it and have, are doing it and uh, they are breaking grounds, uh, breaking new grounds, so why not? It is inform information is the breeding ground for possibility mentality and which imbues confidence to confront the challenges on your way to fulfilling destiny. Your business is not only to feed your family, your wife and your children and maybe extended to your parents and then maybe extended to your relations. No. You are here to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. How many? All the families of the earth. All the families of the earth. And all you need to do is to enlarge their dwelling place, break forth to the left and to the right, strengthen their stakes, because where you are now is not where you are going. It's a stepping stone to where you are going. How many are breaking forth this time? Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Come and give Jesus a big hand of praise.
Amen. Those who see what God is doing around us today will not be surprised if they only heard what we were saying yesterday. Because we cannot but speak those things that we have heard and we have seen. Circumstances may make you stop saying what we have heard, but nothing can make you stop saying what we have seen. <laughs> so when you have seen it, it becomes a thing you say with confidence. So as you read, don't just read to hear what somebody is saying. Read to see what he has saying. And then to be in another word of story altogether. That woman said, I am going to see the man of God. The husband said, don't, don't worry. You are not on appointment. Say, I'm going there. You remember the Shunammite woman? And when he got there, is he well with their husband? Is well. Is he well with the child? It's well. And the child was dead. But she possessed a possibility mentality that if this man who spoke this child into being comes back on the scene, this child will come back. I don't care how dead your business may have been. It's coming back alive now. For to him that is joined to all the living, what happens? There is hope. Help me tell your neighbor, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. So there is hope. The righteous man falleth seven times, but he rises up again. Help me tell your neighbor, there is hope. You are rising up again. You are rising up again. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Lift up your two hands and celebrate the possibility of access to another realm. Come on now. Lift up those two, two hands and celebrate that in a moment. Someone excited here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command to be uprooted every form of negativity in your mentality in the name of Jesus. Every mountain of impossibility, I command them uprooted in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. 